Hey friends! So I am headed on a little road trip because sad, sad news, my childhood bookstore is closing after being there for like 60 years. And they're closing in May and I'm so, so sad. So I decided before they closed, I wanted to take a little road trip and go visit one last time. So the bookstore is in San Antonio and it is called the Antiquarian Bookmark. And it's this amazing used bookstore that is just like a treasure trove of books. And I just have the best memories going there as a kid and it felt like a magical world. And I actually haven't been there in a really, really long time. I'm actually, I'm kind of mad at myself that for the amount of time that I've been back in Texas, I haven't gone back once. And now it's closing and I only have one more opportunity. I also haven't been purchasing any books this month. I'm on a little, not a book buying ban, but I'm just on like a restriction a little bit. But this is my one exception that I'm making is for this bookstore. I'm gonna start driving down there. It's an hour and a half drive. I have an audiobook queued up, ready to go. And we're gonna hit the road. I'm so excited. Let's go. Here is my outfit of the day. And I found this little rug rat running around. You gonna come with me? <laughs> So my first stop of the day is the Antiquarian Book Mart. I just had the best time being in this bookstore as a little kid. It is filled with so many rooms and corners and nooks and crannies of books. And I just loved coming here and exploring and finding amazing things. I'm actually pretty sure that this is the bookstore that I bought my copies of the Lord of the Rings, which are I think the oldest books that I've owned in my collection. I didn't end up finding anything in the store because as you can see, they were actually kind of picked over. They're really trying to sell all their stock before they close and good for them, you know? But the store is actually right next to a Half Price Books. The same owners own the Antiquarian Bookmart and the Half Price Books next door. And they did tell me that they had sent over a lot of their like newer books that they had to the Half Price Books. So that is gonna be my next stop after I'm done here. All right, over to the Half Price Books next door. This is also a bookstore that I remember going to a lot as a kid. And the first thing that I found here is this copy of Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which I have been recommended a lot. So I was excited to find a copy of that. The thing I noticed as I was walking around the bookstore is that I think since I have not been purchasing any books this month, I found that I was a lot pickier than I normally am when it came to the books that I was allowing myself to buy. There are a ton of things, as you can see, that I think I normally would have been like, yeah, I'll just get it. But I think because I'm really trying to limit the amount of new books that I purchase, and add to my collection, I'm just being a lot more selective. The final bookstore stop that I made was Barnes & Noble, which is also the Barnes & Noble that I would go to as a child. And the first thing I saw is The Botanical Daughter, which I didn't know had come out yet. I've been very anticipating this book. I was also surprised this particular Barnes & Noble had the biggest selection of like indie books that I have ever seen in a Barnes & Noble. I know that they have been carrying more lately, but I was just surprised at so many of the indie books that I was finding here, particularly this one sounded so interesting. And then I really wanted this copy of Projections, but they only had one copy on the shelf and it was kind of beat up a little bit. So I did not get it. And the only one I ended up buying is a Botanical Daughter. Oh my God, you guys! I'm so excited. While I was out, I drove past a crumble cookie and I have never tried crumble cookies before. I like literally turned my car around so that I could go back and get some. 
every single week my patrons are posting their crumble cookies and I'm like, I feel left out. I want to experience the crumble cookie. I'm gonna taste test them. I'm very excited. Um, but here's the ones that I got. Kind of wish I had like a fork or a knife or something. No, that's okay. Just a girl in her car eating her cookies. Mind your business. Okay, maybe I'll just break off pieces because I will be taking the extra to my parents. Mmm, that was confetti cake. Confetti sprinkles in a sugar cookie topped with pink vanilla cream frosting. Vanilla cream cheese frosting. Oh my God, that's why the frosting was so good. Next is a raspberry Danish. It's a buttery Danish with cream cheese topping, raspberry jam, and a drizzle of thick vanilla glaze. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, that raspberry jam is so good. I ate the entire raspberry center. Sorry to my parents, they will be getting no raspberry jam. Semi-sweet chocolate chunk. It is chocolate chip with flaky sea salt. Mmm. Okay, that one's not my favorite. I think my dad will like that one. I'm just not the biggest chocolate chip cookie person. Okay, and then the last one, Dulce de Leche. It is spiced cinnamon cookie with layers of creamy Dulce de Leche caramel and frosting. Mmm, I love that. Oh my god, the caramel's good. I need a napkin. Do I have a napkin in my car? My favorite is the confetti cake. And the, honestly, it was, a, okay, confetti cake, raspberry danish, dulce leche, and then the chocolate chip. That is my ordering. That is my ranking of my first ever crumble cookies. What was funny is when I was in Half Price Books, there was a couple there, and they were like, always in the areas of half price books that I was in like we were always looking at the same books and then when I was leaving crumble cookie they were coming into crumble cookie and I'm like oh my god we're spending the day together I'm your third wheel Loki's eyeing up my crumble cookies so I'm gonna give him one of his cookies Loki I got you a cookie from crumble cookie you want one <gasps> yes this is just for you all right, what's your review? What's the verdict on your crumble cookie? Was it 10 out of 10? You would eat it again? So let me show you the books that I got. I was very tired when I got home yesterday. So I like immediately went to sleep, but I'm very proud of myself that I showed a lot of restraint. Like I said, I think because I'm trying to buy less books, I just am being a lot more selective than I think I normally am. And so there were tons of books I saw that I was like, oh, that looks very interesting. I would like to read that, but that doesn't mean I need to buy it. So I only ended up buying two books, one used book and one new book. At Half Price Books, I bought Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sulin Tan, which like I said, I have been recommended this book a lot. So I am excited to try it. I've heard that it has like very lyrical. It's about a young woman who is on a quest to free her mother and it sets her on a dangerous path and pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. So hopefully I will be reading this soon. That's another thing that I'm trying to do is like actually read the books that I buy like very soon after I get them. And then the new book that I bought at Barnes and Noble, which I was so excited to find is A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock. And this one, I didn't even realize until I bought it, but it is blurbed by Delilah S. Dawson, who wrote Bloom, my favorite book of last year. She said, ripe, lush, and bursting with beauty and horror, it will delight, amuse, and terrify. And honestly, this cover is giving Bloom vibes, so that makes a lot of sense. So it takes place in Victorian London and is following these two guys. One of them works on taxidermy art and the other one has a business in exotic plants. And then his latest acquisition is a strange fungus that shows signs of intellect. That intelligence cannot be controlled, plants cannot be reasoned with, and the only way his plant beast will flourish is if he uses a recently deceased corpse. It's kind of giving me like a mixture of like Frankenstein and like The Last of Us, maybe a little bit of Annihilation. Oh my God. <laughs> One of the blurbs on the back literally says, Mary Shelley grafted onto Jeff Vandermeer. I am very excited to read this. I actually found out that this book does not have an audiobook yet. So I'm going to have to physically read it. And it's actually perfect timing because I have been planning to do a reading vlog where I do no screens. So I literally lock my phone, my computer, my TV remote, 
I lock them away. I'm doing no screens for a certain amount of time and seeing how much I can read without the interference of screens. Also just seeing how I do physically and mentally without screens for a certain amount of time. I'm very curious about that. But in order to do that, I'm not gonna be able to listen to audiobooks, which is how I normally read. So I wanted to pick something that does not have an audiobook to read during that time. So I think this might be a good one. You guys can let me know if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on this and I'll pick this one to do for that vlog. I'm thinking I'll do it sometime soon. That is my little book haul from my shopping trip. I'm really glad that I was able to go to that bookstore again one more time before they closed. It kind of brought up a lot of like childhood memories for me and it was really fun. Also, speaking of trying to read books that I already own and not buying a lot of new books, on my Patreon in the entire month of April, we are doing a readathon called Rewindathon, which I am so, so excited for. And basically the entire concept is going to be to read backlist books and to read books that you already have on your shelves. The whole goal for this readathon is to read the books that you already have on your shelves and not get new books or get books from the library and just going into like the backlist of your TBR and your shelf, not reading new books. So we're doing that the entire month of April and I'm really excited. There's going to be a whole bingo board with tons of different like prompts and challenges and um, I'm really excited. So if you want to participate, you can join my patreon it's available to all tiers and I'm just really excited for it so thank you guys for watching if you liked this video please like and subscribe and check out my patreon where I post tons of exclusive content I will see you guys in my next video bye